Happy Monday, everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Woo! Yeah, Monday! 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 This is going to be the I Weird Things Podcast. I'm getting a new camera to record my face because I want to. And uh, I spent... Uh, yesterday like i realized i looked like there was stuff in the background and like this is how horrible of a person i am this is how horribly unmotivated of a person i am world i've been in this new place for like months and like i had like boxes stacked up and stuff i'm like oh that's gonna appear on camera i guess i should clean this place up now mm, yeah <laughs> and and that's five hours just like putting stuff away sorting all this sort of stuff not not because to make my life easier but just to look better camera. look but no, looking better is important that's that's a thing man people uh, uh ashley and i have like held in a pre-covid world like get togethers literally just because otherwise we won't clean the house like it, it is only on 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 pain of our personal embarrassment that we can get anything in any kind of sense otherwise it's just a federal dump at all times yeah you see i've been on um reality tv and thrown up several times on discovery channels so my sense of personal embarrassment is just <laughs> non-existent yeah exactly you Turned are out. you are your 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 level of that is just beyond <laughs> beyond human understanding yeah um, i voluntarily humiliated myself so many times <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 okay uh we are having uh i can tell we're having just a little bit of a of a network thing uh but it's just on the skype connection so if, uh, ooh, that's a loud car Yeah, that's not Andrew, me. is there a noise? That, for whatever reason, your, your mic just like picked itself way up. Yeah, hold on. Okay, it's gone. Yep. Uh, I wonder if this is the Opal, the auto volume stuff. I need to keep looking into that. Yeah, that Opal, man. That's, uh, you know, mm. it's really good when it's really good, but uh, it, it definitely tries, it, it be doing too much, Bryce. Well, and talking with the, um, the Opal people, their whole thing is like, we're not doing we don't it doesn't do anything it or you know it really it's not programmed to do any auto not, stuff wow that's interesting and so it definitely does it on my I, I can watch whatever it is happening on my is this on I, my end uh yeah my it, mic was yeah. better because my mic got jacked way off to the right and maybe it was skype that did that because i always set it way down low uh it it sounds good it, it could be skype i i mean i know that skype um uh does like for whatever reason yeah. skype's auto volume stuff is like hooked into windows in a weird way that it isn't yeah. for other um so if i said and just to tell you it was a septic truck across the street uh <laughs> <laughs> so you want to know what? I wonder if I just take my microphone off Skype, like so oh. since we're not using Skype audio anyway, just change it to another thing. Yeah, and have Opal be the only thing connecting to it. Maybe that'll. Maybe it is. Maybe it is a a, a Skype thing. Let, let's try that if if you haven't already, because maybe that's um. So uh, in any case, we're having a network thing on this computer, so the Skype video may freeze a little bit. Um. But we're still good. We're, we're still we're good. We're going out clean. Opal's yeah. on another network that is is rocking rockin solid. Uh, so just uh, letting everybody know, please, we know that the lip sync will go in and out. It's really on the bottom of our list of important things here. Um, yeah. As long as uh, 
as long as y'all can hear us. All right, you guys uh, ready to start a show? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Andrew, I'll count you in. How about that? Wait, no, I'm still oh. doing the setting thing you asked. Oh, yeah, no worries. Then uh, uh, go for that. Uh, uh, Bryce, uh, did you have a fun weekend? No. You didn't? I had a, you had a non, you had a non fun weekend. I had a bad weekend. <laughs> you had a bad weekend. No. I could, I could laugh about it now, but oh, my God, it was very unfortunate um, a personal bad weekend or were you guys working on personal. on the on the stuff there oh, personal. No. all the modern oak stuff is wrapped up some personal stuff some uh, personal stuff personal no stuff. but i'm back on the horse are you I'm not are you gonna are you gonna it? are you gonna talk about it? is this a public consumption thing or is that no all we get? not not right now Ma Ma not right now ask me Eventually. in 24 hours but all right. Well, he said it involved a horse, Justin. So clearly, <laughs> yeah, he's wait, been working well, he's back at a dude on ranch. I'm back on the horse, yeah. on the literal yeah. horse. It's back on heroin, everybody. Back <laughs> yeah. on heroin. He had a real, he had a hell of a weekend off heroin, and now he's back. But now so I'm back on the juice. Yeah. Okay, I gotta take no this quitters track. allowed here. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, uh, good thing Brian is not here for this line of joking. Okay. Um, just these are jokes. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, All right. How are you looking, uh, Andrew? I'm ready. You're I ready don't know go? what the delay is okay. for. It's really I'm going to catch in in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Hello. In. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, all of uh, my colleagues and contemporaries and everyone out there in the audience. Hello. Oh, yeah. So there's kind of a cool milestone, which I put in here to talk about, and I kind of forgot. Um, this is two weeks ago. Uh, oh, I, for whatever reason, Andrew, we just disconnected or... Oh, my goodness. Why is that got there? Man, I'll tell you what, sometimes you are snake bit, and that is what this show is here today. We are, uh, are uh, making our way through some tech kerfuffling. What the uh, uh, Andrew is actively ker anti-kerfuffling as we speak, uh, but uh, I know that we've got just a full slate of Weird Things content for everybody today. Um, we'll we'll probably just start over. We don't need to vamp. Are we gonna? You know what I mean? I can fill though, just to get the reps in. Like you know, I can just keep these plates spinning. No, no, uh, no. I think what I think one minute no, into the show, we no. can just redo. Uh, we can redo it. Okay. Yourself, man. You know, you want to ride the lightning? Then I guess your name's Metallica. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Like Captain Pooh says, it's good practice. Right, you can hear us good. now, Andrew. Wow. Mm -mm, no. No. When? I asked on the I asked on the politics podcast yeah. whether anybody from Oxford ever uh like threw up the X or did like a DMX impression to oh, represent the fact X. that they're from Oxford. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um I got an email back. No. <laughs> you would yeah, no they probably be more more likely to do the organ O than a big yeah like a Wakanda X. Like yeah, like like uh yeah. I said that they should give that Oxford a degree. The Oxford what? like not, the Oxford should give the rapper DMX an degree, a degree a, a degree because it serves it. And also like if you're just rounding up all the famous X's that really exist. I mean, obviously Professor X and stuff like that, but like what hmm. Oxford, that's a famous X is Oxford, a famous X. I mean, it has I an would X presume in it, in the name. And that's a defining. I mean, if it was just Oford, it would just be another college, right? Hmm. Oxford. Now you, you kind of, uh, uh, get a, get a greater sense of it. Andrew, are you back? I don't know. Am I? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Hey, you are, baby. do you think of Oxford, the school as a famous X word? Andrew? Me? Yeah. I mean, no more than Texas. Wow. See. Texas would be, yeah, not as famous. I, I, I associate the letter X with Oxford more than I do with Texas. I don't know why. Weird. But, yeah. 
ox. Anyway, I, I mean, I would say that uh, the the University of Texas should give DMX a uh, a degree as well. And by the way, DMX doesn't start with DMX with, with with X, right? And yet he's known as X. X gonna give it to you. Yeah, but it's not O X four like. You know, like that's a whole syllable. Anyway, I don't want to cut this conversation. Let's, we should restart. Let's restart. Let's go. Let's. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll restart the show since we were only about a minute in. All Andrew. right. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm gonna count. You don't want to leave in the, the Oxford stuff. I think you that we can cut that one. Okay. I think that's good. Right. not gonna okay. make it today. All right. Okay. That's fine. Hey, make your choices. <laughs> All right. I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Nah, hello, friends. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Start again. I, I have this damn beeping outside. I kept trying to sure. mute myself every time I was beeping. Um also, uh <laughs> Andrew, are we getting are you are you getting a pretty bad delay or is that just because of the you were muting and unmuting maybe the muting uh well why don't you hit disconnect and reconnect one more time for me and see if we can't iron that out oh wait oh this wisp is the wisp is not having a good a good network today either okay oh. it looks like maybe it's ironed out let's all just well, disconnect I mean, like, from I'm, Opal yeah and I'm, I, it feels like we're on the same page here though bryce i'll, I'll disconnect and reconnect here we go yeah and just three two one because I, it's we had a very small hip cup. It looked like it was maybe we're back two on seconds the horse. long. We're back on the horse now. Yeah. Um, we're back on a horse. We can hear you, Andrew. Hello. Uh, you get to hear me sigh. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right. Let's try Take three. This is, be this is better. The, the third time is the charm, I'm told. Uh, all right. I'll catch you in for three. And one, three, two, one. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Rock. Hi, everybody. Yeah, you you just I don't know what's going on here. Why and did now that... I dropped out? How did I drop out? Wait, you can't hear us now, Justin? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I then just... what then what dropped out? Andrew did. I didn't hear him say oh, the word young either. God no. damn. Hmm. Jumping Jack Flash. <laughs> um. Okay, let's see. He probably knows he cut out again. Um, and he probably now cannot hear us. Oh my goodness! This is. <laughs> Sunbat says, yeah. "Please keep the Snyder cut of this episode." Ah. This is a great one. Yeah, this is a very good. Joss Whedon's gonna take over. Thomas <laughs> Marky, we could hear the thing that minutes. Andrew mouthed for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. is the problem with an audio podcast you do need words you, you do need the words unfortunately yeah um it's a real shame because there was a great podcast that was happening before we went live that uh, <laughs> uh you know i feel like i would <laughs> i wouldn't bring up again because it's very gross <laughs> it's but so like gross. it's very gross but also like we're at a point now to talk about like compared to what we what we need to have in terms of any kind of uh, uh audience hold yeah so um hold on. yeah i guess andrew needs to probably disconnect and reconnect again i would assume i did oh I did. hey, the, hey! Skype, hey! The, the skype never the skype never stopped the skype feed never stopped but the opal just cut out on me yeah um hmm I can I can restart the opal, but that'll take a few minutes to do. If, I, we... if it happens again, I all I, I open up my settings panel just to check my microphone, and then all of a sudden it cut. So I don't know. I'm not going to touch nothing. Okay. Um. Okay. And then of course but I just froze on my own video here. So. Yeah. This. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. The we're other also dealing connectivity. With, yeah. Issue. Network. Network stuff. Uh, the network just... effect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's give this a shot. We'll try it again. Let's try it. Okay. You know, the fourth time <laughs> is the charm, they say. <laughs> All right. I'll catch you in, in three. Hello, two, and welcome to the weird things. Two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. The fourth time is the charm. Gentlemen. Yeah. There was a pretty big first that happened two weeks ago in Las Vegas. Ooh, 
Did somebody win at roulette? Is that, did someone win <laughs> no. at roulette for the first time? No, um, still can't happen. The the first member of uh, uh, David Copperfield's crew to test positive for COVID. <laughs> oh, good lord! <laughs> Jesus. It was a national story. It that was, was a, a real one. Story. It was I a did national not know that. story. Yeah. Oh no. No, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was a national uh, thing. Oh. Uh. So, uh, what I'm talking about here is Virgin Hyperloop. This is one of the companies that decided they wanted to try to make Hyperloop a real thing. This is not the same thing as the tunnel that Elon Musk and the Boring Company are digging in Las Vegas. But they've actually conducted a test of on their dev loop test track outside Las Vegas, Nevada, where they put the first two passengers into one, into a hyperloop transport and sent them pretty fast. Uh, they say yeah. they accelerated to a brisk hundred miles per hour down the length of the track. I mean, that's red. I mean, because because the the idea here being that this is something that uh I mean, I guess for 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 what they want to build here, th this would go to L.A. or or would it go to 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 other parts of of Vegas? Where 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 are they building here for the the Virgin? Virgin? I think this is just a test track. I think this is just right yeah. now in a test phase. I don't think they've done anything to gotcha, be able to clear gotcha. or so make it no... because it was the boring company that wanted to go from the Vegas airport to the strip, right? Convention center. Yeah. So the, they yeah. have a con actually a convention center. They have they connect parts of the convention center right now. Gotcha. Um, wow. So it's, it, this is cool. Like this is a, this is a, a, you know, a real proof of concept for, for Hyperloop. Yeah. They're making, you know, forward progress on it. I don't know. I'm looking at the vehicle that they're using here and I don't know how much, how similar it is to actually what, was proposed originally or whatever, but it certainly shows there is this, you know, we we're we've gone back and forth on this because it's very difficult. It's a very complex engineering thing. There's a lot of moving parts figuratively, literally to something like this, but clearly because there's a lot of energy behind this coming from different areas, we know we need another form of transportation that's surface transportation, but very fast. We would like a yeah. really fast, surface transportation in something that's not as uh bullet trains work to a degree but the problem is is you know bullet trains you know putting them in there's still an upper limit how fast they can go and you have problems with bullet trains through you know we've never really been able to get one going in the united states for a lot of reasons and you know we have like a california bullet train is like the slowest bullet train ever and it's you know yeah a nerf train because it's it, it really is you know when when was the the the, the shinkansen there in in uh, Japan first installed? It, it it's like twenty year old technology, right? Like, like if, if like it, like the eighties now, yeah. Okay, yeah. So like forty uh, uh, year old technology. So it's like yeah. in, in terms of that, if if we're even just reimagining something that was successful in places, uh, uh oh wow, nineteen sixty four in the to for the initial Tokaido shinkansen. Uh, wow. No. Yeah, so I mean, I think it, it it's a great idea that really deserves an upgrade, and also, uh, it, it's it's a great time I think to to reimagine these kinds of things. Like, obviously, the technology is there, but we're in a a tremendous upheaval in a lot of different ways, obviously, and uh, uh, the, the the concept of of building something like this, I think, is is uh, you know the, the the time is right. The question, of course, in in America, is exactly. Uh, how you put something like this together, but then again, you got to have a uh, have a, a, a the 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 text got to be there to even begin to realistically have that conversation. Yeah, there are a lot of things to be solved. I remember I visited one of these companies that was working on this. It wasn't this one, but another company that had been working on some tech, and they had this. It raised millions of dollars, and you go into their you go into their offices, and they had these big LC displays showing graphics of the way it could be used and everything going on. and And I was like, it was all kind of dog and pony show. It was one of these things yeah. where I'm like, this is not you know like oh we could use it for like cargo offloading. Or I'm like that's like a horrible inefficient use of this because you don't need a hyperloop 
to go faster than your cranes. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. just sounded like they're just trying to create you know a need because we know that it's just super, super hard to do stuff, you know, to get this thing working. So, um, yeah. And, and that's where I think, you know, initially the concept that, that Elon Musk put out in terms of a California version was like, okay, it runs alongside of interstate five, which I just drove over the weekend and, and down to San Diego. And it's like, that's owned by the state or whatever. But then the, the newer version of it is, Hey, we dig tunnels and tunnels are easier to do than, uh, uh, you know, going through any kind of regulation in terms of, uh, where it runs on, uh, above ground. But I guess even just the idea of like, okay, Hyperloop works. That's a great first step. If, if, if this is like, Hey, we, we, we've run it. It runs fast. The technology is there. There are two very pretty people that were in this. We're watching the video now of a Virgin putting uh, two attractive people in a Hyperloop and it going, it's seemingly going very, very fast on this test track. So uh, that is that, that, that is an amazing first step. And then the next is just going to be like, all right, well then where does it go and who wants to use it and, and what's the price? And that's really where the rubber meets the road, which is odd because there's going to be no rubber meeting any road in a Hyperloop. Yeah, although with this, it's interesting because what's what was called the Hyperloop and what this looked like seems substantially different. I'm trying to figure out if this is just sort of a, a monorail and a tube or, you know, oh, okay. way it's working here. I don't know. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like they're loading a capsule into a tube, uh, but we don't see much of like, because this is supposed to be like in a vacuum within the tube, right? We don't really see much of that. And I don't think procedure. it is a vacuum. I don't think it's. I, I, to my understanding, it is a two, but the, it's using wheels on a track on either side. Hmm. And I don't think oh, there's then any that's sort of... just a, that's, that's just a, uh, that's, that's a, a train, a genuine bona fide six car monorail. <laughs> yeah. A hundred miles an hour is like, yeah, it's so not downplaying it. Maybe really... we don't understand something going, but it's, it's not the big, you know, uh, no. pneumatic tube promise. Yeah, because that was the yeah. idea was that it would like kind of hover like a like a like an air hockey disc, like yeah. and and that's that's part of why it would be able to go as fast and be, you know, a, a, a frictionless experience. Yeah, this looks like a vehicle, motorized vehicle going down a track inside of a tube. <laughs> Sunbun so in our chat yeah, calls it, it a love if roller coaster. If you ever been to Disney good. World, or if you ever been to Walt Disney World, and you know, been on the monorail. It's looking like which that. is fun. It's a fun monorail. It's fun. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice little. So, I mean, then I guess like maybe the 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 thing we take out of this segment is that does the name Hyperloop mean anything, or, or are we just well, all going around and and saying it? Yeah, and that's the only thing to clarify. There are several groups trying to build Hyperloop systems. This is Virgin Hyperloop, which is not you know just separate from boring companies, separate from what other efforts are. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess anybody can kind of use the term right now, but um, this one is not not what we are promised. Right. But. Huh. I, uh, hmm. Yeah, that makes it very weird because I, I, I like this is like this is a great news story if it is a proof of concept of the idea of the of the Hyperloop with the low air pressure and, you know, the, the reduced friction and air resistance and all that stuff like that this story makes a lot of sense when it's that but if it's not that then yeah this is just a very cool uh disney park attraction yeah and there there might be again apologies we may not be understanding what's going on here but what we saw in the demonstration and what it looked like it looked like a thing on tracks inside yeah a cause, tube cause that wasn't when... evacuated of air when, when when you go to the Wikipedia that Bryce just showed for Hyperloop, it basically says that what, what we understand, the uniting concept of what a Hyperloop is, is just a proposed mode of passenger and freight transportation. Then first used to describe as an open source VAC train design. So, I mean, I, I don't know, although it does say Hyperloop is a sealed tube with a system of tubes and lower air pressure, which a pod may travel substantially free of air resistance or friction. So I guess that is 
the baseline, although who knows if, if Virgin, if this is a Virgin Hyperloop, which means something totally different. Yeah, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see. They've been doing, when they do the tests, like over at the uh, SpaceX factory, they have a big, huge, this is, you know, the, the Elon Musk has been looking over, they have a, like a one meter tube that runs the length of the property. And that's where students go in the building. That's genuinely, they evacuate the air from there or whatever, as far as I understand it, you know, and they make it as close to a realistic scenario as you can to test it through there to see how fast vehicles can go. And so the, that's where they're trying to go for like the real legit, like, you know, no rails within the tube, et cetera. And maybe, maybe, but, you know, reading a little bit of the write up on the verge, like maybe this is all because this is the first test with humans maybe this is at a slower speed to test out the safety infrastructure and, and make sure that it can just get from point A to point B. Um, which. Yeah. I just know the, the, the width between the wall of the vehicle and the tunnel is different than what, you know, the idea of to try to take advantage of the flow. Um, hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because well, hey, there's a, it's a right. quote. What is the quote? This is no one has done anything close to what we're talking about right now. Says the CEO Jay Walder. This is a full scale working heart that is not just going to run in a vacuum, but is going to have a person in it. Well, is this one running in a vacuum? Yeah. I mean, if that's the plan, then it's at least built for that. Even if we're not it? seeing it, it would have to be right. I'm. No, I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not a, I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not a vacuum scientist here, <laughs> but I, it looks to me like there's something fishy going on in the desert. Yeah. Anyhow, I uh, hope they, I hope they succeed. Yeah. Yes, we do too. You want to know what else I hope succeeds? Hmm. Uh, international commerce, and and we're a small part of that here on Patreon.com. Slash weird things. You can support this program. If you head on over there right now, get the custom RSS feed. Guys, I can't tell you enough that this is something that will make your life better. You're going to put it in the podcatcher of your choice. You're going to get the shows early. You're going to get our after things show early. It, it, it really is just the better way to live. So head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. That's right. Gentlemen, I have a question for you. Are you ready for an optical Shoot. illusion? I am. Yes, always. I'm Never always ready for an optical ready. illusion. So I sent Bryce a link, and we'll have to describe this to our audience at home mm -hmm. or on podcast. We're listening. And this is, you know, every year there's like, I don't know if this is from there, but there is like, you know, like they give out awards for like best optical illusions because they're researchers trying to find new and novel ones. And sometimes you get, reworked principles, things that, you know, have been done before, but you see new twists on them. And it's always sort of surprising, even 2020, we're finding simple little hacks that all of a sudden make us think we're seeing something. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, this is a tweet from uh, Jagarikin. Um, that's cool. I, I think I did see this on, on Reddit the other day. So, uh, Justin, uh, what, what are we looking at here? Well, it looks to me like there is a series of men that are going up a escalator uh, and then they are leaping off and they are landing on the ground and uh, then they are running, uh, but they are flashing different colors. But holy moly, if you actually pause it, these little guys aren't even moving at all. It's just it's just pulsing, and and the guy on the ground is just running in place. The people on the escalator are, are staying there. This is nuts. Yeah, it's a very convincing illusion, and it, it just because yeah, you look at it like oh yeah, they're jumping and they're falling and they're running, and then you stop and you look, and even when you look closer, your brain's telling you like yeah, I know they're moving. And you're like no, no brain, you're you're wrong. Well, and wow. What what makes it interesting is the the last little stick figure here is actually animated in a walk cycle, but he's stationary, but because of the color, the colorama effect where it's going through the rainbow of colors, it does look like he keeps inching forward. Maybe he'll get there, Bryce, leave it going. 
Uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> it's great. Is if you if you isolate, like if you even just look at the stairs, like you can almost convince yourself that they're still going up. Oh no! It looks like the. It looks like the stairs are moving upward and that the guys, I mean, that's part of the brilliance of this is that it doesn't look like the little men on the stairs are climbing the stairs. It looks like the stairs themselves are moving in an escalator fashion. And wow, this is brain melting. Wow, that's cool. All right, so so where can people find this? Because I'm sure on an audio podcast, people are like, cool. <laughs> we'll have a link really in the great. show notes. We'll link it in the show notes there. Yeah. But well, I mean, where, where, can can you just point us to the the, the oh geez, no, it's a Japanese. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Justin, read it out for everybody. Uh, no, it, it is J A G A R I K I N on uh on Twitter. That is where we're seeing it, and it's a, it's a tweet from November nineteenth, twenty twenty. You should be able to find it if you just enter that in and then search and then see the brain melting uh, uh gif that that is that is in that tweet because. Holy crap, that is that is crazy. Our brains are so fragile. Just fragile little delicate flowers. We're we have so much information flooding from our senses, our eyes, and everything. Our brain has to have these little hacks to make sense of things. And that's what optical illusions are. They just exploit this. Oh, you're gonna make this assumption when I do this. And it reveals kind of the programming in our brain. That's kind of like the um the shepherd tone, I believe. It's like a visual version mm -hmm. of, that, of the shepherd tone. If people don't know that, that is, I think I can play maybe a little bit here, but this is where it sounds like you're listening to a pitch or an assembly of pitches that keeps rising in tone. Um, let's see. Right, so it's definitely getting higher pitched. But if you keep listening long enough, you wonder like, well, how, how high can it go? <laughs> One hour later, ah! we're still. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it's it, because it's it's basically uh, an assembly of multiple uh, voices that are each going up in pitch while their volume is going down. So you get this rising sound, but uh, you're kind of just listening to the same section of audio looped effectively. And it creates this idea that you are constantly, it's a constantly rising pitch. And you can do it yeah, the other way as well. Yeah, play it again, and I'll tell you what the thing to listen for, Justin, is okay. how many tones do you actually hear? I would say either two or three. That's the key, is you sort of, it feels like it's one initially, yeah. but then that's sort of like it's that one wave going over another, and you kind yeah. of pick up on this other one, and so. Mm -hmm. Like surfing, kind of. You're just sort of yeah, yeah. Man, I think very cool. Shepherd's tone. Yeah. No wonder Space Mountain rules. Like mm. I, I feel like that's like like the secret to eighty percent of the the the, the ambiance of Space Mountain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I I've played that soundtrack like just to chill out. They've got all the so many different versions. All right, I've sent you a link to a Flickr photo. We forgot to talk about. True Dragon, the first official, the last time we saw astronauts on the Dragon, it was a test mission. This is the first official, let's send astronauts to the space station. And he sent four of them up there. And we're looking at a Flickr photo here. And there is something very interesting in this image that and all the live feeds I've seen, they've never, and they may have, but I may have missed it. They've never talked about. Oh, okay. Um, Hold on. We're we're playing we're playing hide and seek here. Is it this bottle of clear liquid that I believe is probably vodka? Is could it the, be. Could it be. The Notice liquid? they they stow their stuff on the windows. Up on top, that just so to orient yourself, you see the the very top. That's yeah. the hatch. That's the that's when they dock with the space station or uh, dock with the space station. That's where they go in and out of. There's the other hatch. They enter and it's the other side. So there are two hatches. 
and we see them looking at their their packets, whatever, and they're strapped in. I think is that the back row? So this they sent four astronauts up, by the way. I think the thing can hold seven. So I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Yeah. Now that you know, here they are. They're sort of floating up. You know, where the top, where bottom is, all that, everything is. You know, there's a toilet on board. No, no, I, I didn't. didn't. Well, I mean, I, I guess I, I would presume there would be because there, there, there was a toilet, a weird chemical toilet on on other previous spacecraft. So uh, as this is the like first class version of, uh, of you know, all spacefaring vehicles, I would presume there would be a toilet. Yeah, the toilet's in the shot. The toilet is in the shot. Is it what? Yeah. Uh, is it this little white backpack looking thing here? No, no, no. That's just a dude's backpack. That's just a backpack. Is is it that gray thing behind him? This uh, this nope. NASA supplies. No, is no. it the thing that they're? Is it the thing that they're holding that kind of looks like a sub, like a Jimmy John sub? No, that's not the toilet. Okay. Is it? Oh, <gasps> is it the vodka jug? <laughs> no, okay. it's not the toilet. It probably wouldn't be clear, <laughs> Justin. Is my guess. It's probably not. I don't know. Clear. I mean. You know, there's medical value. Is it? It's not the uh, hatch, right? They're not like <laughs> going do you up. Just, the- do, you just, <laughs> do you just yeet it out into space? <laughs> um, there is a uh, um, uh, so um, look closer. Okay. So look, this look. is crazy. Uh, well, we got a we got an Evian bottle here. It's also I not, will tell you okay. there is a poop emoji on it. You can actually see it in a high res image. If you're in a high what? enough res image, there's actually uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the Skype video we're looking at. Bryce might be able to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking around. I'm scoping through. We've kind of got uh, you know a what looks like a uh, an overhead storage here in the back. Uh, Wait, is it that thing? Oh, it's this yeah. thing. Oh, look, pan, look up. Pan, what's what's on the white label? It's, I can see it. It's, it's got a little poop. <laughs> uh, so, so, so it's in the ceiling. It, what it looks like is, so we weren't far off with yeeting it into space. Like, there's just a little, like, what, what looks like a, like, like a cannon turret that I assume <laughs> is, is like, folded up. Mm-hmm. And you can just uh, place your butt right on that and fire one off. So the way it works, like, yeah, you, it doesn't go into space. Don't worry, everybody. Um, how did you bring down the International Space Station? Funny thing. Justin had this weekend where he let himself eat anything. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a vacuum tube. It's this vacuum tube sort of thing because, you know, it's space. And that's the thing that blows my mind. It's on the ceiling. The toilet is on the ceiling, of course, because in space... Yeah. It's but you know before launch, it's not like you can go like while well, you're you know sitting on the launch pad in Canada like hey guys, oh, I got it. I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, and they're like yeah, oh, it's up there. But also, uh, this is I mean this is the seating sec. This is where the crew is. I mean it's it's not it's not like there's a lot of is is they don't they don't have a curtain or. There might be a curtain. That, there's something that pulls down probably. Okay. You know privacy screen. You know. Something, something NASA, SpaceX term. Because that's, that's, I mean, on an airplane, right? Airplane, you go into, like, they've got a whole little room and the door and the little lock and the little light. This is, this is, you're, you're just a foot away from six other people. <laughs> yeah. Well, shame. You're, and you're going to, you're going to go live in a space station for six months or to a year. It's you know got about as much space as you know my apartment. So you're if you're shy, space ain't for you. <laughs> you wouldn't be you wouldn't be on the capsule to no, begin with. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, you are you are you are already in the one percent of of uh, people who are ready to cross the line. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sure there's like a NASA test where you walk into a room and it's a bunch of researchers in lab coats and there's like a toilet at the other end of the room. And maybe like a small little divider. No, like, go, go ahead, go. <laughs> no? Yeah, no, right now. Let's go but right there's a screen there. You've got a screen. Yeah, but you're gonna. Can they hear me? We're scientists. We know what Come it on. sounds like. Exactly. And then all of a sudden, the sound that comes out shocks and delights everybody, and they're like, <laughs> oh! "Armstrong, you're in." Yeah! 
<laughs> One of them goes, is it supposed to sound like that? That's what? Oh, yeah, it, oh, oh that screen. sounded like a, delic- needs a screen. Like a, like a delicate French horn. <laughs> Well, Mr. Lyndon Johnson. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a feeling when there's a toilet on the ceiling. <laughs> wow. I, wow. Would you, okay, show of hands, would you use the space, the dragon crew capsule? No, I'm not even waiting for you to. to <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god yeah of course would, would i would i at the spacex factory try to climb inside and support myself by the strap to the ceiling oh, just god, to see yeah does the suction hold <laughs> you know it's got a vacuum in it oh no i'm a nervous po- i i think un, uh, despite my best my best intentions i think i am a nervous pooper so i don't know that i could be up in the iss for that long <laughs> well, but also it's like no, but this gets to the the point that we made before. If that's where you're drawing the line, then you're not going to be an astronaut. Yeah. There's other things for which will stop you before you get to that point. <laughs> now the question would be, all right, Bryce, let's let's fast forward a little bit, okay? And let's imagine that we're we're in a world where now, uh, uh let's say you can go. I know that this is not how it it's actually going to work, but but for the sake of this argument. Um, that is poop related. There is now a trip from Austin to Tokyo in like an hour, right? But it it includes about a half hour of weightlessness in uh uh you know what is what is thought to be space, and it, it's at that moment that it's like boom, like you are now free to float about, and now you have a chance. It's only like maybe 10 people yeah and they're probably gonna hear over whatever sound is is happening they might hear you poop but you really you you got some rudies before <laughs> you uh you left i had i had and, and had now a, had a large boys, coffee and a soda a, 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 a rumbly in your tumbly <laughs> before you land in uh, is it is it uh, exactly like this where there's just yes. a hose in the ceiling okay, now, 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 maybe it's a little bit more dressed up. Okay. Maybe like you get a blanket to put over you. Like, if I had but, a blanket, uh, I think if I had a blanket, I would do. It. I'm not against pooping in space. That's great. I just don't love the idea of taking just a big, what is essentially a big Dyson vacuum hose. <laughs> but now everybody's gonna know. Everyone's gonna know. Like you are definitely just putting a blanket over your head, and it's the exact same process. What do you yes, want to be- because okay, the the yes is because. It's an hour long trip. After 30 minutes, we are back on terra firma, lost among the sea of other humans. But meanwhile, like there's like a, a, a bunch of people pointing at you. There's like a <laughs> Japanese mother and daughter, and the daughter's pointing. <laughs> mite, mite. And they're, yeah, exactly. They're just I, saying stuff that you don't understand. Bryce uh, it refer, it referred to it as a Dyson vacuum. And I'm thinking. You know, SpaceX is pretty smart with their money. I bet a Dyson vacuum would still be more expensive than this. <laughs> probably. Yeah, no, they probably developed something uh, very, very specifically for getting the blank out of your blank. Oh, my goodness. I just, I just, I, I when I, because I kept wondering, like, they never talk about toilet. I know there's supposed to be a toilet on there. And then when somebody said, I was on, like, a Reddit forum. I'm like, oh, yeah, they even put a poop emoji on it. And then you look, and it's like, oh, my God, it's on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I love the poop. Em- I like the the poop emoji because it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, we have to universalize this this thing that doesn't look like a oh, toilet yeah. at all, so people know it's the. Toilet. I just yeah. There's something too about different the fact languages, there's a cannon, different cultures. There's a cannon filled with poo aimed directly at your head as you're sitting there getting ready to land. I mean, an amazing. I guess also, but this this kind of uh, for for engineering is the same thing as the threshold for the astronauts. If you're already trusting the engineering to put you yeah. into space and bring you back, then you can at that point you've crossed the line of like, will they be able to hold the poop, or am I going to get poop on me? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I had not considered that this thing like doesn't even work perfectly. Well, no, no, no. It, I mean, it just, no. Yeah, you know, it does work perfectly. It, 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 it's a chemical toilet in space. That's not plumbing, Bryce. It's not like, like, it's not oh, like no, if, there, if, if there's, it, there's a vacuum in it. Because remember, it, it, it should be, have a vacuum in everything to sort of. Okay. Yeah, um, but no, but it doesn't, it doesn't 
lead out anywhere. They have okay. to empty it. No, at the no, end. but it's a pretty. Yeah. It's more complicated <laughs> than your toilet, though. I'm saying. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm just saying, like Bryce is like it You're doesn't. No, I'm, the I'm imagining the You're Spirit no, Airlines I'm version of this, where there are holes in the pipe. And, yeah, it's messed up. No. I said Somewhere... it works perfectly. <laughs> Somewhere there is a guy at a table at SpaceX factory with wrenches and spreadsheets and stuff, and he just heard you, and he's demoralized, and he just dropped his tools. That's Bryce. That's Bryce. <laughs> Bryce is so disrespectful. We should. I mean, and and he you're won't even get, poop on this flight. You're, like you're gonna disgusting. get you're gonna get a glad bag and an adult <laughs> diaper mailed to you anonymously in the mail, and say, "Fine, Man. have it your way." Yes. Exactly. <gasps> oh gosh. I just, I think like people, people have been working for years to make this thing work right. I, <laughs> I'm just, Price, that, I'm just disgusting. In, look, the and so that, disrespectful. That's why I said the Dyson, the Dyson always works, but you know that they they keep making. You know, Spirit Airlines is gonna make a Dragon capsule at some point, and you're gonna pay three dollars to I use the pooper, and it's not, not even gonna work. I'm not gonna fly in the the Spirit Airlines Dragon <laughs> capsule. The mega bus of airfare. I'm tell I'm telling you what. At some point after the Wright brothers, there was a conversation where somebody was like, you know, I'll bet you Ted Spirit's family is gonna build one of these eventually, and they are having the same conversation. Like, absolutely <laughs> not. I never. These guys suck. <laughs> Gentlemen, I, I have guess, one more I, story I, I guess, for you. I guess it would be Ted Value Jet before. Uh, <laughs> They have to change the name. Uh, gentlemen, one more story for you. Yep, let's go. Di Digital Domain has been working on VFX for years. They've worked on Titanic. They've worked on, you know, uh, worked on a couple, two of the Avengers movies. They're pretty well known. They're one of the early sort of people to get involved in digital effects. And right now, they're working on creating realistic AI that could be used perhaps as like surrogates or whatnot for video calls. And so there's a demo they have of a character called Douglas, which basically did a, one of these super high resolution scans of an actor and to be able to capture him and then have him be able to do like interviews and talk or be on Zoom. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, just one more sort of effort to sort of, you know, work on creating digital avatars. Yeah. So we've got here and Douglas, uh, can we is, are we okay to look at this video yeah yeah uh so justin which one of these oh maybe it's not i was gonna say <laughs> no, yeah they don't uh yeah uh, uh there's definitely a bunch of people and then one of them looks like ronald reagan from the new call of duty but uh so i think it, yeah i don't know i mean just the because of the fact that it's not you know uh uh photo realistic doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile yeah i mean it's it's pretty it's hard because you go in there one they chose an actor who's kind of looks like a character actor with kind of an expressive face to model it on and he's a little bit over animated in the video but mm -hmm. it's still pretty good i mean it's still pretty good i've seen some ones that have just been like eerie like you couldn't tell the difference of like really good face tracking so but you know just wanted to show what they've been working on so yeah, and, you know, I mean, it's real time. Yeah, I think that's that's the big thing is that, you know, whether or not it's it's like something like this is not necessarily designed to fool, right? Like this is designed to just be a you know, passable enough that it's worthwhile to have them involved in the in the in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. and it being real time does kind of change the game a little bit. I mean, when when you started describing this, it made me think of like, well, how many times in say the the nineties or the early aughts were there attempts to like make digital, uh, you know, digital stars, digital actors and actresses, and digital models, um, in the hopes of them being, you know, a global. Uh, you know, icon, you know, some big visual icon and those, none of those ever kind of panned out. Um, but to have, have something like this, which is like really high resolution, you know, it, it showed, uh, you know, some hand movement as well as, uh, you know, all of the face and, and lighting stuff, um, it, you know, absent of, you know, the old attempts to make the next hot Hollywood actress, I, I think this could be a very usable tool, um, 
for well, you know for virtual for virtual yeah the, the virtual actor as a celebrity is always sort of a dumb idea idea to me because it's like it's like oh how about jessica rabbit you know, mm, you know like you mean the voice you know it's great but like yeah. it's who, who am i gonna follow on instagram you know, oh, you know, the, the avatar for Jessica Rabbit got into a fight on, you know, Malibu today, you know, but like, no, it's not, it's not one of the reasons we have celebrities, we follow them. So that's sort of just sort of the silly sort of like, oh, we'll create a virtual celebrity. Yeah, they're called well, cartoon characters. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's called Bugs Bunny and he exists yeah. and he's never going to die. And, and that'll awesome. be that. And he rules, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think, yeah, I, I agree with you with like the digital celebrity thing. I was having a conversation, I forget who, with who, but uh, they were like, oh, you know, like that's definitely coming. And I'm like, well, no, because like the real reason you put celebrities in movies is so they can do press, like because everybody knows them and they have an expectations and they, and they can then advertise, hey, a relatable experience awaits you at the movies or on demand now, right? And it's like, you're just not going to have that for a, a a digital thing like it, it, it'll take as much work to create that as it would be to just have it in a person yeah you look at when disney which notoriously cheap um when it comes to casting their animated features they still go for named people they could go and they have actors they have people that can do tim allen's voice they have people that can do tom yeah. hanks voice which they'll use them for fill in they'll use them for the you know the, the when they do the tv show versions or whatever People exist, you know, Shrek, there's a guy whose job is to say the things that Eddie Murphy doesn't want to, says he doesn't want to say, and he'll say them. And you don't know when it's him or it's Eddie Murphy, but they can just hire him and it'd be a lot cheaper. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, Jairus in our chat says, aren't we already seeing the beginning of this with uh, virtual celebrities with VTubers, which I feel like that's just a higher fidelity version of like, of like what you were talking about, Andrew, of like Bugs Bunny, of, of Lola Bunny. These are people using, you know, uh, a face rig or some other software to have uh, an animated version of themselves appear on screen and their voices in real time and it's edited and matched up together uh, but i or something like the michaela influencer right like a very obviously not real uh uh girl who a woman building a brand name on being a virtual person out in real life i mean i think i think you have one-offs like that, but that's not, that's, you're not going to get Michaela in the next Mission Impossible film. Yeah, you might. Yeah. I, you're going to get, you're going to get digital extras. You're going to get that, which we've seen that already. And you're going to probably get even more like closer up, you know, in a restaurant, blue screen, all of a sudden put people at a restaurant acting as extras. That will happen. Um, you know, like I said, we've seen it in, wider shots you know we've seen virtual characters you're gonna see that bigger shot you're gonna get digital actors we've used that to like reconstruct actors like when you know paul walker passed away and you know they try to do mm -hmm. digital versions of him and then use his brothers and stuff and you're, you're gonna get that you know we use that for stunts and stuff and i remember every time like there uses a point where movies are like god we're using digital actors to do the stunts you'd see the stunt like it looks horrible <laughs> it looks like a video game cutscene, <laughs> but it's gotten better to the town now the point is you only know when it's bad you don't necessarily know when it's there and that's one of the things about VFX is there are good companies, there are bad companies. There are good companies on short deadlines that don't get the time to do it right, you know, and et cetera. And so sometimes mm -hmm. like, oh, it looks bad. It's like, yeah, because they spent under they underspent. They don't do, do it right. And we see so many VFX today, we don't even realize how much we see. Mm -hmm. But oh, yeah, God, the actors yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I, but, I yeah, just I can think see that... sorry, no, oh, sorry to step on you, but uh I, I think part of it gets into the idea and, and we've seen this with technology, uh, you know, for forever is that specifically with this kind of tech, people just kind of assume that there's magic there and it's like, Oh, well at a certain point, the computers will get so powerful that we'll just be able to flick a switch. And now a Tom Cruise will pop out and, and there'll be enough technology that just kind of does it without uh, having you know anybody behind the steering wheel when in reality this is going to be something that like yeah you might see somebody that is a virtual celebrity on some level or uh, let, let's just say an influencer but like to do it you would require a staff the likes of i mean it would still require probably more human interaction than just having a charismatic person with uh, aesthetically pleasing facial features mm-hmm 
they do show one interesting application that I, I think could be very possible could, could be uh, possibly a cost effective or effective practical use of this which is like um, as uh, like on signage and like in public transit or uh, uh, on phone as like a virtual uh, like a chat bot right so maybe to make it feel like you're talking to a human being even though you're still going through a chat dialogue tree or something like like I, I can see that as like a cheap humanizing element um, to to the real world. Yeah, I mean, there's, I think that you know, we're going to get, you know, if you took, oh, we're going to make an AI version of Rick from Rick and Morty. And yeah. he's going to be a personality and stuff. You put him into scenes and he's going to do Rick stuff and can kind of determine what he's going to do. We're going to capture Royland's voice, but he's going to be able to speak, you know, as, yeah, there's going to be, Totally, totally, totally feel that. But I don't think we're going to get rid of all actors, you know, or anything like that. I just sent you a link. Remember, uh, you know, the visionary on all this, Mr. Leo Laporte with Dev Null. I forgot about this. Oh, yeah. He had a virtual barista character who would talk with Soledad O'Brien. Wow. I forgot about this. Back in 1996, for MSNBC had their show, a series called The Sight. And so yeah, Leo created this. And this was at the time was pretty high tech because they had these like a silicon graphics machine to render them in real time to be able to interact. And it was, you know, it was a neat gimmick, but it's not like this has made journalism better. <laughs> I mean, know? that's that's I mean, God, what a what an amazing trip back in time to realize that long before MSNBC became what it is today the initial concept was very much microsoft the ms is microsoft and nbc and it was like ah tech and news together on a network here powered by the the, the 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 big tech brand and and the the name and news you trust and then eventually it it, it spun off and became its own thing but uh or the the the, the, the direction of the of the channel became different but wow what an amazing Oh, the nineties. So that was Boy, did we that that was ninety six. That's just looking a little further down on the Wikipedia page. The Silicon Graphics Onyx computer that they used to make, uh, th ag again this image of a uh, rather nineties CG looking guy, very was, very like reboot video toaster uh, 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 character there. Uh, cost one million dollars that computer did, and. You could probably do something. You you could you can do something much nicer on your phone, and also wearing a VR uh, mocap suit. So not you know not uh, what we have now, where it's no, like it would just... be it would be a hilariously dated for effect Snapchat filter now. Like it would be one that you'd be like, oh, it looks like crap for fun. You're right, right. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah. Just looking up the uh, the specs on the silicon graphics onyx computer yeah because i mean uh uh 20 years i'm sure has been uh uh <laughs> we've come a lot we've come a long way baby come a hey, long listen, way it, uh it had you could put between i don't know which one they were using you could put between like two to eight in the the single rack between two to eight CPUs, you could have a memory up to sixteen gigabytes. Oh my god! Well, what did they know? They would have had this. Would have been the follow up on them. Anyhow, um, yeah, computers are awesome, <laughs> and they keep progressing. And the, the crazy thing now is, when we look at now, we're like, ah, oh, our phones are amazing and do this. But we also know, yeah, but like ten years from now, you know, yeah, it's wow. like you look at ever look at a non retina display now. N no, but I. Oh, sweet Lord, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All you see is the lines. You're like, how could I? How could I even see this how thing? How did we I do just, it? This it is it it primitive. Mm -hmm. it's like, we get so used to it, and then yeah. All marches I had, forward. I, so we'll I, I had a, I had a very uh, 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 tech uh, moment where I realized how primitive I was. Uh, we were driving down to San Diego where I was when we did the last show. I didn't realize that in the car that we just bought, the rear view mirror is a camera. Oh, nice. And I didn't realize that <gasps> until I turned it on 
or I was starting to adjust it and I and I turned it on and I was like a caveman. I was just like, ah, ah. I'm, I'm driving and I'm like, too right. Ah, stop, get it away. No. I and love the idea it, of adjust trying to adjust it as if that will do anything to the angle, but <laughs> well, no, no, no. I no, because it, it, it still works as a mirror, right? It, like it still does function as a regular, like so. The camera can go out, and it's it's not like you have no view in the in the back. But when you, you know, the 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 the, the switch to turn it on is like what you would used to do to like flip it from like down to up. Basically, it's like that little notch at the very bottom. Mm. Oh yeah. And so I move, I moved the notch, and it just was now this like brilliant display. And I was just, I was terrified. It was, it was like showing an iPhone to somebody in in, in the colonial era. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Uh, but anyway, yeah. so yeah, th th this is these are things that happen. Y'all want to do picks? Yeah. Let's pick it up. I got a pick. Um, I, uh, I think I'm actually almost done with this. I, I started playing this, uh, uh, in earnest over the weekend and, um, I, it, it is given out, is being given out free to people, uh, uh, who have a PlayStation five, which I do. Um, it is the, uh, new game from young horses called bug snacks. Uh, this thing is kind of interesting. Um, it has a very cutesy aesthetic. The idea is that you go to, uh, a deserted or quote unquote deserted or uh, uh, partially civilized island where these the bug snacks these creatures that are um, made out of food um, uh, are r run rampant and your job is to catch them and to feed them to people and when you feed them to people parts of their body uh, change to match whatever you fed them um, it's very the 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 promotion for this is very cutesy because they had um, a popular uh, indie pop group make the theme song for it. And uh, the actual game itself is actually kind of emotionally heavy, kind of, right? You're dealing with this village of about 12 people who, like, at one point were trying to work together and live on this island and all achieve their own different goals and, like, fought and had a big blow up and actually separated. So the whole point of the game is you're trying to bring everybody together together. And actually resolve these like emotional conflicts and so you're kind of w watching as you are walking people through dealing with you know mar you know issues with their marriage or their relationship or their social relationships with other people uh you know and and that's what surprised me the most is not like the actual gameplay itself is kind of rudimentary right like go and uh leave a trap out or cover it with this material that the bugs like or bump this bug into the other bug and then you can catch you know it, it's uh that that part's rather plain but i'm i'm surprised at the emotional maturity of of a kind of bright and vibrant game like this um it's also not very long which is nice um uh i i'd probably say in the 10 hour range if that um but it's it's it, it, the the um, the emotional stuff is what really surprised me here because you you all the videos and stuff you think oh it's like it's a pokemon right you're going and catching all yeah. these crazy creatures and you're turning your friends into food stuffs um but the that that little bit of emotional depth was was uh, uh a nice surprise so i i'm digging bug snacks if you've got a playstation 5 you can get it for free it's on pc and playstation 4 right now it's also relatively cheap so uh that's a, a pick from from me uh justin Get those bugs. Right, just to, yeah. It just sounds a little bit like the three body problem in disguise. Really? And the <laughs> premise there is that the, you know, there's people are playing this big game that is actually, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but like somebody's trying to indoctrinate you into some sort of alien life cycle thing. Mm. Well, they want to be eaten. They, no, they want to. They want you to feed them to the other ones. Oh, even though they're sentient and adorable, like mm -hmm. there's, you're being propagandized and I don't know to what for. This is, and, that's we knew it was coming. That's a function here, right? The whole point yeah. is that these two pivotal centers of the community have disappeared, and so you're getting everyone together to find them. And isn't it crazy that it seems like there's a weird monster on the island? And I, you know, I, I don't know exactly how that unfolds, but uh, you're you're right, Andrew. That's not that actually does sound very similar to the other thing that you described. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so I started, we, Ashley and I stopped watching the crown after the first season because there's only so much that I can handle the, the hero and protagonist of our story, uh, heroically not do anything. (laughs) Um, like I, I just, every episode in the first season was like, like, oh, the queen wants to use a fork. Uh, 50 people talking about how the queen has never used a fork. And if she uses a fork, then the entire British Commonwealth will fall apart. And then heroically, she doesn't use the fork at the end. And everyone's like, oh, what a bold and brave stance. Uh, that being said, everybody's raving. I mean, apparently the show is amazing and great. And uh, the new season came out. So we're like, hey, let's Give the crown another shot. Started season two of the crown. And I've liked it a lot more, largely because uh, it has just kind of fully descended into uh, a very like soap opera y, <laughs> like who's, you know, a, a gossipy sort of world. And, and I presume that that's kind of where things continue to go, considering this most recent season is dealing with a. Uh, you know, Princess Diana and stuff like that, where you are in full tilt, you know, a uh, royal family gossip stuff. And and uh, so I have liked it. The, the less that it's about um, how important it is to have a queen and the more it's about, hey, isn't this crazy rich family doing crazy rich family stuff uh, with gigantic Vista shots and uh, above average acting, the, the happier I am with, with The Crown. So uh, season two of The Crown, that's my pick. Nice. I I've only just started the show I'm about to talk about. I think I'm only maybe two episodes in and I've heard really good stuff about it from like family, but I hadn't really heard anything kind of in the, in the social media. And then I would keep seeing it in the Apple TV, like selection store. And then I found out that you can get this with Peacock. So I'm saying, no, now I recently subscribed to Peacock. Finally, I want you to imagine game of Thrones set in modern day Montana. Oh, okay. And you have Yellowstone. I've heard great stuff about this. So Kevin Costner plays the patriarch of a family that has the largest, like the largest ranch in the United States, which is on the edge of Yellowstone. And he has to contend with one. There's a developer that wants to build a big, and some of this is based on real stuff. Like this happened in Montana. One's a developer that wants to create this big, huge, you know, suburb of, you know, developed homes, et cetera. And then the other is dealing with the local Indian tribes who have been there for everybody else and have an interest there in dealing with a lot of the problems of the reservation from poverty, et cetera, exploitation. And you've got these three sort of different factions and then his own family, which is pretty messed up, trying to navigate all of this. And this is a guy who's, you know, trying to, Keep this largest cattle ranch, you know, this amazing piece of property, etc. Um, so I, I've heard um, that this is great, um, and that uh, previous to it being on Peacock, it was stuck on was the Paramount Channel or something. Yeah, like it was Paramount Channel, yeah. And that that's that's cool. It's it's cool to hear that this is cool is good, and it's kind of similar to I guess uh, like Search Party a little bit on HBO Max, where it had a few seasons already. So when you dive in on you know a more accessible platform you kind of have yeah. a lot to dig into that's kind of that's cool man and by the way i, I was looking at, at the imdb as uh as bryce was showing it and it, it's taylor sheridan is one of the creators that's uh the hell or high water guy right yep yeah, yeah so, and, so and he's so yeah yeah already a, a pedigree for for that kind of uh uh you know sicario that that you know, in, in, in the wilds of America, what can go on in these, uh, in these kind of, uh, with these sort of characters and those sort of spaces, which is rad. Yeah. I, I like it so far because it's, there's, although it's kind of the, the center of the story is Kevin Costner and his family. And I think everybody's really well cast. And then, but you realize that, it's not like, oh, and then anybody he's against is a villain. Like, no, like, you know, the the you know, the Indian tribes, like they've got they've got, you know, their their clear way of seeing, you know, how they look at things and you can be sympathetic to that. The land developer, you know, it's there's 
he's kind of a sleazy sort of guy, but really he just wants to, you know, build a le- build development, you know, and we'll see where things are going to go. And, and Costner is like, like uh, Don Corleone level, like when it comes to like getting things done. And so it is way, I'm like, what's it going to be like? Just people try, ah, oh, we lost the cow. Go find the cow. We found the cow. Yay. Yeah. Let's watch Hee Haw. Um, no, it's, 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 betrayal gunfights all sorts of stuff in kind of realistic sort of ways you know so well that's heightened yeah that's that's awesome because also tv costner like you get you get like an actor a a real movie star like like costner just to 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 act on that stage is just dope yeah and and just i mean a great cast you know wes bentley plays one of his sons i mean it's just a really good you know all-around cast so anyhow yellowstone is my pick so far Nice. Boom. Gentlemen, it's been weird. Hey. There you go. Hit, hit the W. Mm. W on that. All right. Very cool. Uh, well, fancy W. Uh, <laughs> it's a fancy W. <laughs> a fancy W. Uh, cool. Well, uh, you guys want to do some after things here in a minute? Sure. Need to, anybody need to take a break? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ready to roll actually. I'm good to go. I also, uh, can just roll right into it if you'd like. Let's roll, baby. Yep. All right, here we go. Click some buttons. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in for after things here in three, two. Hello to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. That's me. And Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hello. So I want to talk a little bit about what it means to be an artist, what it means to be somebody with a passion, what it means to just be a person. And I don't know the full story behind this. I mean, I read what was reported, um, followed the story, and assume that the elements are true and assume i assume that <laughs> the, the 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 suggested parties are probably who they are but have you did you see the thing that the actor lucas gage retweeted he was in one of the actors from euphoria where yes he was doing an audition so let's let's do you want to explain to our audience what took place justin so the viral video was a uh, uh from the perspective oh. of a, uh, a, a an actor who is on a Zoom audition, but the person who is casting him has not uh, muted his mic and is talking about how terrible his apartment is and how small his apartment is, and uh, uh, this this uh, very charismatic young actor uh, comes back at him and just says like, "Oh yeah, I know it's a crappy apartment." Uh, that's why you gotta cast me. Cast me. Put me in your movie. And uh, uh, the the British stuffy casting director uh, uh, is is very apologetic that he had not muted his mic. That this is portrayed as uh, uh, somebody who had accidentally not uh, muted their mic. Yeah. So um, we're not gonna get into who it was that said that to him, but it wasn't a casting director. This was a known person in Hollywood. So, well, okay. So I, it sounded like somebody that is a very famous person. I, I, I didn't know if that was for real who it was. We, well, that- I, I would say that I, forensically, uh, you hear this guy's voice, you go watch this guy's voice, and you look who commented on this. You're like, oh, we, yeah. But the point, okay. the point is, is yeah, the comment was made. Uh, oh, look at these. You know, call like, look at these poor people. Blah blah blah. Like this. I'm gonna say first. I've said dumb stuff I regret. I've said dumb stuff, insulting stuff, dumb stuff all around. So before I cast any sort of stones or anything like that, let me make this very clear. Probably wouldn't be very hard for anybody to dig up me being a complete A, okay? Yeah. Um, Does not excuse it. Doesn't excuse it. Say this. And my takeaway from this was this, was like my frustrating sort of thing, though, was uh, first is to, to treat anybody like that is horrible is horrible is absolutely horrible to the way the guy handled it he handled the actor uh, lucas handled it extremely well um third 
man, I better watch when I'm being funny or trying to be say something or dig into people, whatever, just to get a laugh. I need to be careful about that because things can have consequences. Um, and those are my three takeaways. And the thing I'd like to say is like, often when we're artists, we're struggling, we're building a business, we're creatives, we're trying, we're, we're, we're students or we're learning or we're at sort of some point in our life, our self-esteem takes a hit. You know, our self-esteem can really be, you know, just as hard to sort of feel good about ourselves sometimes. This is speaking from my own point of view. And when you get somebody in a position of power or whatever has says something or criticize you, whatever, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. But if you've never gone through that in life, if you've never been a person that's gone to go through that low point or that point where you're struggling, then you've never earned anything. You've never worked towards anything. And you have to understand that, like, you know, part of the process, part of the journey is the struggle. The struggle is real. And it's things we can all relate to is having gone through, you know, points like that. And I watch this and I'm thinking like, uh, you know, I just, your heart just kind of goes up. Cause I have friends that are actors who, you know, who go through the ups and downs. I know people who were, you know, in the LA and LA who were actors who worked as waiters who guess what? You can't do that right now between gigs. Yep. And you know, and I think about anybody who's had a dream or anybody just, you know, just trying to, you know, pull the family together or whatever, like, you know, we're all there. We, you know, well, anybody who hasn't gone through that and forgets what it like, we don't need to care. I don't care what they have to say because they don't understand. So. Hmm. I, I, I totally agree. Um, uh, uh, to that video, all I will say is it looked like a fine apartment, man. Like, <laughs> look, I don't know. Like, it was I, a hotel I, I room. He was like... actually... He was actually on location shooting for uh, a series or something like that, and that's where he was staying. Really? Which is the funny part. Oh, <laughs> wow, that's hilarious! Yeah, because it didn't really look bad. You can't you see what. much of the apartment, and it looks nice. Yeah. The part you see, there's a little inset yeah. where there's a dresser and yeah, a TV. Right? There's cra- I, I, there's molding around the door, I, like. Yeah, yeah, if that if, if if that's a tenement, man, then I have lived. <laughs> uh, I was I, I was homeless for the vast majority of my life, because uh, that looks okay. Uh, to your larger more, point, though, Andrew. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and more people watch this video than that director's last movie. Just gonna say. Uh, Please, go ahead. I um, I really think that, that there is obviously an element of struggle that goes into anything, um, and I often find that. Uh, how you process that struggle often kind of defines not only your work ethic, but also your art at times. And I, and I don't think that there is a right or a wrong way to do it because some people, uh, uh, you know, fetishize that sort of pushback in different ways. Either you want to be that person that, that pushed you down when you were lower, you want to destroy that person that pushed you down when you were lower, that that person doesn't matter. And and you're going to make sure that their opinion isn't something that you ever uh, uh, factor into your brain. And, and ultimately I think that you wind up using any one of those tracks as part of your motivation to go forward. Like either you are seeking out new things that you do want to wrap your point of view around or you are singularly deciding that this is the track I want to follow because I am going to be better than this person uh, possibly thought I was. Or, uh, uh, oh no, this is the thing I want to do. And I, I want to make sure that I am at a point where I can never be pushed down because I'm going to be in a, in a position to push other people down. And I won't because I will have more mercy and I'll remember where I was in this moment more than obviously this other person did. But beyond all of it, I, I think there's really just an element of common humanity. And and the more we show that at every stage of our, our, our growth, the more we will remember it when we're in a position where uh, uh, we could possibly hurt somebody uh, either by being in a bad mood or directly callous or possibly just saying something that they think is funny and, and obviously is a, uh, uh, embarrassing and hurtful yeah you know yeah. I, I i uh you know i i i uh you know i'm pretty i can be kind of quick to ire a little bit um and 
Uh, that doesn't mix well with social yeah, media. Very, very famously. <laughs> very famously. Old quick eye Bryce. You know, everyone just knows. Don't piss him off, man. He'll, he'll you'll be, you'll be. Don't, don't set up. Don't set him off. Don't set him off. I Justin. know. I know. We all look. We all tiptoe around <laughs> eggshells that are the the fragile, explosive ego known as Bryce Castillo. But, but, but on on social media, especially where there is like a very you know the gap between uh, between any two people is is sm smashed to basically nothing, and um, I I have to i have to catch myself sometimes um and just remember that like just let people do the thing that they're gonna do and 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 that that's all you can really do um just i don't know i i i sometimes you just want to shake people and say this is not this is not effective don't why are you doing lists like this this is not even the the number the top 10 things you could be doing to achieve what you're clearly trying to do um but you have to let people also make those mistakes and you have to let those you have to make let those people just do the things that they've decided to do um and and so i don't know i think i think that's very related to, to this story where uh, it, i mean i'm not insulting anybody's homes or apartments or things but i can often give a very critical eye to everybody and a lot of times that's um not <laughs> what the situation calls for <laughs> yeah i'm i i don't know the circumstances too like the director whatever who knows what that before and everything else like this he could be a great person and this is just sort of there was a rant or some moment like that happened and we never know and then we can't be too quick to judge and say ah this person's the worst person in the world this moment doesn't look good and i'm like i said before like i'm sure i've had my moments where i look like the worst person in the world but still you know i you're not you're not your apartment you know, you're not your bank account, you know, you're not your LinkedIn, you know, you are what you do every day. You are who you treat people. And that's an I, example. I, I wish I kind of lived up to more. I, I'll tell you what I, I, the most productive I've ever been in my life is when I am focused on a process, a pipeline. Here's how things begin. How, here's how things go. Here's how things end. I end projects. I release projects. They don't sit around forever, right? Like they have a life cycle. The more you get to the end of things, the better off you're going to be. And to be totally honest, maybe the greatest uh, uh, you know, success is a byproduct. The, the, the salvation you find in creation is the act itself. And, and, being able like the, the 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 kid that did this that that released this thing obviously there's a little bit of schadenfreude of uh being able to flip the power position of being uh, uh oh okay well you thought you were making fun of me well guess what if i put this out and you look like a total chode then I, everyone loves me and you come off as 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 the peen uh, but beyond that like he's a working actor he knows he's on a hit, a uh, uh, critically acclaimed television show. This is a process by which he gets into other situations. But the the fact that he's done this and uh, uh, you know feels some level of self confidence about himself was the reason why he even probably felt uh, uh, like that he could put that out because like there is and uh, there is a a salvation that comes from doing things. And, and and at whatever level and however awkward it feels like every day if you want to create how are you creating today like what is what is the step that you are taking to go do it and I, i'll say too that being an actor is rough like i look at what my yeah. friends go through and we you see we think of like oh it's great you're on you know you're on a movie set and everybody loves you and you make money like no, that's that's point zero zero one percent of an actor, and even the even ones who you see on TV, they go through periods like they're always up. They're getting you, rejections the norm. You're oh, I want to get this part. Like no, they don't like you for it. No, they don't like you for it. And imagine every time you've gone through a job interview and they said no, going through that every three to four months, you know, and multiple times, yeah. multiple times, like nope, 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 nope. It just whittles away the self esteem. It's part of the reason why actors are insane, crazy people, because 
you, they, you find a coping mechanism to deal with that and it ain't always healthy. And, but that's hard. That's a hard thing. And like I said, this, this is a actor who needs a thing, wants a thing, wants a job. And all of a sudden the person he wants it from in this situation treats them like complete dirt. And it's just, Holy cow, within the business, you know, producers and directors, do you see how they really feel about actors? And it's like, uh, different. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think we talked about it too, was, uh, was it Jeffrey Owens, who was the, the, the guy on the Cosby show, who was, you know, they works, you know, loves acting, works when he works as an actor, works as an actor, then he works with like doing, you know, acting programs. He's very involved in the whole, the whole world of acting not just to be on camera but to be you know, teaching and working in it to help make ends meet he would work at trader joe's and somebody yeah. snapped a photo of him at trader joe's and they're like you know like and again i understand why kind of a person who's not in the industry might be like oh wow look a famous person's working at trader joe's and probably made them feel better to be able to say this to say look at that i don't know the intent and it's like yeah this is a guy that loves acting loves his craft and you don't always get wall-to-wall -wall roles and he's supporting a family and that's in that person they you know was not i don't know if it was really attempt to shame maybe to shame him or whatever but other actors are like yeah this is what we do this is what that's, we do that's you the know? thing that happens that's that's the that that's what it is yeah uh uh yeah it, it's it's uh you know i'll tell you I'll, I'll fast forward to my pick but uh one of i think the best representations and and really two series, but but uh, the Ricky Gervais series, extras and life's too short, are are both meditations on what it's like to be an actor, and specifically the comedy mind from the very cruel and callous world where you're not only getting rejected because you might not be the right fit or you might not have the right resume, but that resume is your face and your weight and your voice and and in, in life's too short it's uh you know about a smaller uh or it's a, a warwick davis uh, uh a a little person actor and so it's like there's there's so much that kind of goes into that but but specifically extras just the every episode is is centered around that bizarre world and how much just the little humiliations build up the the the, the, the small to to epic humiliations and what happens when you actually get your dream when your dream happens and it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to be and 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 it's neat because it's sort of a story about a guy who wants you know a journey of an actor but uh extra work extras many people in extras particularly in this town in la are, are aspiring actors trying to make ends meet trying to work gigs and it's sort of you know, they get discussions about like pay disparity, which is an important issue about like, hey, are, you know, are, you know, female actors made, made, it's making as much as their male colleagues and stuff. There's a lot of things, questions that need to be addressed about that. Nobody ever talks about extras. You know, you'll, you'll get, yeah. you'll get actors get up there and champion like, oh, we've got to go fight for this cause to raise money and whatever. Hey, that person five feet away from you. They hope that craft services and they hope that ca there's enough food catering to feed them today. Cause when they go home tonight, it's an empty refrigerator. Have you thought about that person? And yeah, well, you know, no, no. Cause you get, you get treated like there is a difference. And I worked when I was younger, I'd go work magic gigs. I go work as an extra because in Florida there was a lot of, that was an opportunity. And then later on, you know, having your own show and stuff and hiring extras are being, you know, in stuff. And I can tell you, there is a difference between being an extra and being the talent. And being oh, yeah. an extra is a great way to appreciate that difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's, that is uh, uh, a very, very specific line of work. And uh, uh, yeah. it is, yeah. So uh, that, that 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 that's gonna be my pick for for this uh, uh, this episode is is just I've been rewatching extras, and in a lot of ways I can't I can't kind of believe that it hasn't that it never got a American reboot. It just seems like oh. such a such an enduring concept that could be rep like you could redo extras now, and I would watch it. Wow. Uh yeah, uh, are we doing are we doing picks? Do we have any more about uh, on the topic? Um, no, we pick anything you want. 
Okay. Uh, I, I got a pick uh, since we're doing that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to double down on a pick. I think was one of my picks last week, but uh, I have uh, spent a bunch of time with uh, Hades, uh, the the video game, the past uh, the past week, and I really dig it. Uh, you uh, story in in terms of storytelling, um, it is very unique in that it is a roguelike game where you are meant to start from the beginning and hopefully beat it in one go. Um, and you play it a many, many hundreds of times to try to, to, to get to that point. Um, I think it embraces that, that structure of, of gameplay, uh, in its storytelling. Uh, there was a, a video that came out over the past week about, uh, the writing for this game. And they, you know, they were saying like, uh, there's more words in the script for Hades than are in the entire series of Game of Thrones or some, some statistic like that and um and 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 it shows when when you play it right when you go and you talk to all these characters there's always they always have something new to say even though you're doing the same things even though especially the way that the game is distributed right there are certain characters you see many many times um versus characters who you may not see until the later points and may not see them a lot uh it's always fresh it's always new dialogue uh it's almost all of it is voiced and um it is set up. It is. It tells the story of why your character is trying to leave hell and why uh, Hades is mad at him and why all these different people are helping you uh, and and X Y and Z. It it embraces uh, it in it, it embraces that structure as a way to tell the story. And and uh, a lot of roguelike games do not do that. A lot of roguelike games just don't have a story or it's just procedural what and, you and see. just mm -hmm. yeah just just to explain to people the the concept of a roguelike game is you start your run mm -hmm. and then depending randomly the, the like level and i'm going to use these like you know examples but like level two isn't always the same level two right. like there are always a switching so your experience is never the same you're not just trying to run one thing it's always changing and always randomized and so mm -hmm. this i guess takes the, the story element of that to the next level where it's not just like you run into a guy in level two everyone sometimes it's the milkman and sometimes you run into the postman and sometimes it's the butcher now that is the case but they all have different ways depending on how this particular version of the randomized uh game has laid out which is amazing that's remarkable yeah you know they talk i think it i think it was for the channel um people make games that that did this video but you know they talk a little bit about like you know the dialogue is written uh both to progress the story but also to react to things that have happened so you know in one run that i did over the weekend right i got a lot of power-ups from uh poseidon and eventually i uh saw zeus again and zeus remarked on, on that it's like oh you you're uh, you know my uh, my brother is uh, very helping you out now i'll help you out like even little things like that so there are conditional things and it you know, it prioritizes various things. So, uh, you know, st actual big story beats will will come up when when it's their time. I I just think it's it's very fascinating um, uh, to have that, and all alongside like it's also a very good game. Like it's 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 fun, and they make it very accessible um, for beginners. So, I I think it's really smart, and I think it shows um, that with a lot of of effort, um, you can take. Uh, you can take a genre like like a roguelike and treat it in a different way, treat it with a lot of care to elevate it beyond, I don't know, the standards of, of where that genre is. And I, and I think people can take that away from into other things as well. That is, I wish I, I wish there was like a couple extra hours in the day because I think that there's so much interesting narrative stuff going on in video games. And I wish I could spend more time looking at it. And the, the the amount of thought and attention and care that goes into this is very impressive. Yeah. And um, but I don't. So I have to live vicariously through your video game newsletter. Tell everybody how to subscribe. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Neshcom.com, N E S H C O M dot com. There's a link that says games newsletter. I do a video games newsletter. I haven't I haven't done one in a while because I think everything's almost in stasis because these new consoles have come have come out. And there are still not new games and a lot of the a lot of the chatter going on is you know which console is better which one gets a percentage a one percent better performance than the other one and it's it's very mundane stuff so I, there hasn't been a new one in a minute but uh uh neshcom.com and uh, sign up it's free yeah 
Uh, do you have a pick, Andrew? My pick, I, I do have a pick. I've just started playing with it, and so far I really like it. I've been for my uh, my other occupation. Uh, one of the things I like to do every now and then is I've been working with OpenAI and developing stuff and applications for their technology. But one of the things I also have been doing is helping with the documentation. And if you use the API, actually, a lot of that was actually written by me and um, the ones on how to use the prompt, that is. Uh, everything else is written by much smarter people. But anyhow, I've been doing videos and stuff internally, and I've actually been doing videos for developers to sort of show how to do stuff. And sometimes I might explore a feature and then I want to show it to the team and I have to, I'll make a video and say, hey, look what you can do this with. But I've been just switched over now to start using ScreenFlow, which is an app that's on the Mac. And it is a really neat way to make a, you can just use QuickTime if you're on a Mac to record your screen, but what ScreenFlow does is records your screen and your video. So you can record yourself as you talk, you know, and explain things around there. Then, then go edit it. So it's got an editor. So it's pretty easy to go in and add titles, add stuff. And they just added a feature, which a lot of editing software is doing now, where you pay 40 bucks a year and there's a royalty-free library where you can just drag video clips and sound effects in there without having to go hunt for them. Oh, that's nice. So, hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So the quality on it's really good. You can reposition stuff. I, you know, I've been using... Premiere to kind of edit my videos, but I'm like, man, I'd like to just use a dedicated tool to do this. Yeah, and Premiere is very... very heavy for if what you're doing is screen, you know, screen recording and, and demonstration stuff. It's not that it it's not any easier just because it is a very high end piece of software. Yeah, because I found like we did some stuff where we did some video sessions and we recorded on Zoom, and the quality was just garbage, and. I thought I should just record them again, doing them on my own. And what's nice is it records two tracks, your full screen or whatever you select it to, and then your video screen. And you can make your video screen go full screen, and then you can cut back and forth. It by natu it naturally puts you in a little box in the corner, like you know a screencast. So ScreenFlow is what I've been playing around with. And so far, I've enjoyed it, and just it's found it very easy to use. And that, that 40 bucks a year to have that library of sounds and videos and images, just to be able to drag them in there, super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So ScreenFlow. They're doing a special right now. So it's the ScreenFlow right now is like a hundred bucks, but it's normally like 150, 160. But if you get it with the you can get it for 150 with one year subscription to the media stock library, which is like a half million soundtracks and images, etc. Oh nice. So, awesome. 150 bucks. A little pricey, but if you want to do quality stuff, I think stepping up to somebody like this makes sense. And that price is uh uh uh, comparable to other media library you know prices it's less than mm -hmm. we pay for the music library for scam nation for example or yeah. something yeah. like story blocks yeah it's going to be a simpler library but i looked at what i was able to i set up i wanted to find this this i found some good video graphics i could throw in and stuff i'm like oh it's cool it's usable so there you go screen flow <laughs> gentlemen it's been after <laughs> there we go we did it everybody Hey, yeah. good shows today. Good yeah, yeah, shows. Good stuff. Uh, right. Well, uh, we've got uh, uh, Court Killers coming up in about two and a half hours. We might have Meryl Barr. He's fighting a sickness, uh, so we're not quite sure just yet, but uh, that's coming up. Happy Hours back on Wednesday. Happy Hours back on Wednesday, everybody. Check it out Back then. on Wednesday. Yep. And, um, yeah. Uh, in uh, tomorrow, Night Attack. Night Attack's back. Uh, Justin, you're streaming later today, right? You, you've got a new evening schedule. New streaming schedule. Uh, yeah, evening streams Ooh. on uh, Mondays and Thursdays. So uh, oh. uh, ten, sorry, seven to ten Eastern time uh, on Mondays and Thursdays, and then morning uh, stuff on uh, Tuesdays and uh, Fridays. Nice. Uh, well, uh, everybody tune in for that. Justin R. Young here on Twitch. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys uh, another time. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Yeah. See ya.